So the question is, once you finish processing your data, what can you do with it? So for this session, I'm going to talk about several different software packages and that you can use to visualize your data, make a few sets of measurements, um, particularly for a structural application. And of course, there's many, many more applications as well as software packages. So if you have a particular uh, question that relates to specifically your interests that we don't talk about here, please don't hesitate to ask us before the end of today. So here's examples of structure for motion data that the topography team has uh, worked on. Here's an example on the San Andreas Fault. And here is a, an ancient volcano in Northern Mexico. And so today I'll be showing, uh, focusing mostly on Cloud Compare. I'll be showing how you can use this software to make structural measurements of a fold near the San Andreas Fault. And I'll show you where you can access this data, but I suggest that during the presentation you just watch and you can feel free to replicate the activity later on. And I'll then show Lime, which is a second software that is uh, also very powerful for doing different types of structural and strategic or, um, yeah, uh, analyses of your data. And then I'll briefly touch at the end on approaches to author your data sets and why you might be interested in doing that. So the software that I'll show you today is Cloud Compare. Maybe we can add, Ramon or Chris can add that link in. So Cloud Compare, in my opinion, at least, is really a first, at least very early software that you should use for visualizing and analyzing different LIDAR and structure for motion data sets, as it's very easy to use and is quite powerful for a variety of applications. And then today I'll be showing a demo on a data set in the Mecca Hills in Painted Canyon in California. And I'll show you a map of that area in a second. And this data set has been published on open topography in the community data space. I can either show you that later, perhaps uh, Rona Chris could add the link for that page also in the chat. And then a few years ago, I went to Painted Canyon and collected the data set that I'm about, that I'm about to show you and uh, used that for a structural geology class here at Arizona State University. And then last year, as we all know, the pandemic came. So I took this as an opportunity to turn this exercise that I used in a class um, onto a exercise that's public and is now available from open topography. So we're going to go to Southern California and look at a data set that's here. So yeah, this is Southern California. For reference, here is Los Angeles and San Diego. And this area is along the San Andreas Fault System where the uh, plate motion is accommodated by three major faults. And the area that we'll look at today is just to the east of the San Andreas Fault here. And so today in this uh, demo, I'm going to show you how to visualize a point cloud using Cloud Compare. This can be done with either an SFM or LiDAR point cloud. Look at how to best change the display and visualize that point cloud. And I'll show you how to make strike and dip measurements using the compass tool, how to make uh, length measurements, and then the fact that the data can be then compiled and analyzed and other types of software such as StereoNet. So the tool, the, the compass tool that I'm going to show you in Cloud Compare has been written uh, in this publication here, Rapid Semiotic Fracture and Contact Mapping for Point Clouds, Images, and Geophysical Data. So if you're interested in learning more about this tool, I suggest that you check out this uh, paper 
or the Wikipedia page that the authors wrote to go along with their tour or their tool. So going to now show you how to use Cloud Compare for working with a cloud. And so this is Cloud Compare. You can download it. It's open source software. So it's very easy to get and it works on uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux operating systems. So the first thing that we're going to do is open a data set, for example, one that you could have exported from the work that we did earlier today. And the data set that we're going to look at today is called Painted Canyon underscore PC. You'll see it's saved as an LAZ file. So this is a zipped version of an LAS file which is the very common way of saving point cloud data. Um, LAS stands for laser and was designed for LIDAR data sets, but works also very well for uh, SFM data sets. We're going to uh, drop that into Cloud Compare. And then Cloud Compare has several dialogues open uh, that will help you to more efficiently load your data set. This first one asks you if you want to open all of the metadata associated with your data. And I always say yes. As a rule, you can say apply all generally. And then the second step is very important, but it says that the coordinates are too big and the original precision may be lost. And so it's asking me if I want to just shift or move my data so that it gets rid of all the extra uh, coordinates or numbers in the UTM system so that then the data set takes up much less memory when it's open on my computer. And that, efficient, that allows then the different visualization and computes to be done much, much, much faster. So as a rule, I always say yes. You do want to be careful though, if you open several data sets into Cloud Compare, that you apply the same transformation because it computes a unique transformation for each data set. But we're only opening one data set today, so we don't have to worry about that. So it proposes a suggested translation, which we're going to accept, and that then places the center of the data set very close to 000, zero, zero coordinates, coordinate system. So we say yes to all. And then depending on how big your data set is, it takes a few seconds, sometimes a little bit longer to open. So here is the data set in Southern California, uh, about less than a kilometer away from the San Andreas Fault. And so Cloud Compare uh, lets you visualize your data set. So if you have a Windows computer, different window tools on the mouse will let you move around your data set in different ways. So if you click the left button, then it lets you rotate. The uh, middle button, you can zoom in or out. And then for me, what is often most useful in making measurements is to click the right button and that lets you then move it around and then it'll uh, importantly move the axis of rotation to being the center of where you then place the data set. So yeah we can uh, rotate around and get a good sense for the 3D structure of this particular outcrop. So if you then click on your data set, it will be highlighted and it then opens um, this field here, which gives you some options for how you want to display or visualize the data. And then one thing that I often like to do, especially uh, for using this compass tool, is to make the points a little bit bigger. So previously it was at default. And I just made it uh, point size three, and then it looked like everything got a little bit bigger. So when you zoom in now, then it still keeps the structure uh, of the outcrop in better detail. 
And so you should definitely feel free uh, when you use Cloud Compare to play around with these tools and improve the visualization so that you can see the area in the best way possible. So then let's go to the Compass tool. So if you download a fairly new version of Cloud Compare, it comes automatic with the software. And it's a plugin that you can find here. Plugins, and then scroll down to Compass. And then that opens up this toolbar here, a little bigger. And so this has several different tools for making different structural measurements, particularly for measuring planes and different lineations. And so today I'm going to show you the plane tool. And that is here. So if you then, to use this tool, you get this uh, red circle around your mouse, and then you can go in and select areas by finding a, a fairly planar surface and then clicking in that area. And then what Cloud Compare does is it finds all of the point cloud points within that within this red circle, takes them and then solves for the best fit plane, which you can see here, as well as the pole or the normal vector to that plane, which it then displays. And so you can go and repeat this approach uh, diligently over the whole outcrop. And if you take this data from open topography and want to practice, I do suggest that you practice a few times, make as many measurements as you can, and then probably throw away your data and try again, because it does take a few, um, a few times of doing it really to get good at making the structural measurements. But the key really is just to find these planar surfaces, zoom in, and then put the compass tool on that area and mark it. Say I come to an area that doesn't look very planar. I guess so should have said at the beginning, we're measuring the bedding orientation along the fold here. If you come in and click something that isn't very planar, uh, Cloud Compare will not make a measurement there. Although I seem to be pretty good at finding planar areas. But anyway, yes, yeah, so if you do find a non planar area, it will then not make a measurement there. And you won't see these uh, green rectangle with normal vector appear. So each of these measurements that we make, if we were to then turn off the point cloud up here, then you see the uh, green planes as well as poles that show the measurement. Not sure. Can you see where I'm pointing? Can you zoom in a little bit over there so we can just get a little closer to them? This seems also to be a bit of a delay, but. Yeah, there you go. So, so right here, those are the measurements that I made at first. So you see the best fit planes then, as well as the poles to the plane. And then uh, each of the measurements are recorded here as well. And so if you want to turn some of them off, and if, then if you unclick them, they disappear. So the ones that were here are now gone. We can then add them back. And if you want to, uh, in the end, export your 
data, then you can come to this save button here, where it will then open up uh, this window where you can select where to save a CSV file that will have strike dip and dip direction, as well as some quality statistics for each of your measurements.